Most people think math competitions are all about being a genius, but they're wrong. You don't need to be born a math prodigy to win. Trust me, we weren't. We went from bombing our first AMC to scoring in the top 1% internationally, and we're going to tell you how to do the same. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Melita. And we've been competing in math competitions for the last six years. We started competition math in sixth grade with the Math Counts in AMC 8 series, and since then we've earned a 144 out of 150 on the AMC 12, getting us top 1% or distinguished honor roll. We've also qualified for Amy and Math Pr Prize for Girls four times and won various math awards at the national level. The AMCs, um, in this case AMC 8 in middle school and AMC 10 and 12 in high school, is a competition math series that has 25 questions of generally increasing difficulty that builds off of your school math knowledge into the competition math realm. So each competition has its own scoring mechanism, which you should definitely learn. For AMC 8, for example, you get no points off for wrong answers, so you should guess on all of them just to make sure you answer every question. On the AMC 10 and 12, however, you do get points off for incorrect answers, so don't just guess on every question. Be careful and intentional. The scoring for the AMC 10 and 12 is 6 points for each correct answer, 1.5 for each question left blank, and 0 points for each incorrect answer. The highest possible score is 150, and I think you need to traditionally score around a 90 on the AMC 12 and 110 on the AMC 10, but the cutoffs are listed on AOPS, so we recommend you look at that and see what the cutoff is in prior years. So how did we get here? Well, the first step is to just start. Huh? If you have any opportunity to compete in any math competitions at whatever age, take it. Because more often than not, you're not going to qualify for an upper level in your first year. It takes a lot of practice and years of doing badly before you can end up doing well. First, ask around in your school or your region whether there are any competition math clubs or local groups that you can join. A lot of these local organizations host their own math competitions and they'll also provide you with more opportunities to compete, which is just more practice. So it might depend on your state or region, but some that come to mind from Florida are FLSAM, which is the Florida Statewide Association, as well as Integrals, which has various uh, districts and organizations for girls across the country. So now that you have more experience competing in math, you want to actually get better at solving the problems. And although you might be looking for a shortcut, the best way to get good is really just to practice problems. So this means going through all of the prior practice tests of the same or similar competition series. So where can you find these practice tests? The AMC competition series has all of their past exams listed on AOPS or Art of Problem Solving. These tests are listed by year and we recommend you start with the oldest exams and work your way towards the more recent ones so that you're solving the most valuable problems when you've gained more skills. Especially because some of these older exams have slightly easier questions, especially in the beginning, and some of the more recent ones likely mimic the type of test you will be taking in this upcoming year. When doing the practice tests, I recommend not worrying about time restraints and just focusing on solving the problems in any way you can. You really want to focus on learning those new techniques and not limiting yourself with the time. Eventually, start watching the clock as you are completing these practice tests and also make sure to leave a little bit of time to check over your work, especially because personally, we've made a lot of silly mistakes in the past and that can really hurt your score. Even if you know how to solve the problem, even just one mistake can make you get that problem wrong and get zero points. So if you have a couple minutes left and you don't think you can start that next problem, go back, especially to those early problems that you breezed by and make sure you didn't make any computational or silly mistakes. A little tip that when you're doing these practice tests, Write down new formulas you come across because you're going to want to go back and try to remember them and you won't be able to find them later on. So I had a little formula notebook that I wrote all my new ideas and then when I had a little bit of free time here and there I could just flip through it and refresh on. Our third tip is to set a goal for yourself. After completing a couple of practice tests, you should be able to understand what kind of questions you can solve and around how many points you're going to score. Also outline the steps to achieve that goal. So for example, if I'm taking the AMC 10 and I want to score at least 100 points, I should calculate how many questions I need correct to score that point threshold. So if your main priority is to qualify for the AME, we highly recommend that you take the AMC 12 if you know just a little bit of pre-calculus. The AMC 12 has a much lower cutoff than the AMC 10. Additionally, these pre-calculus questions are quite simple and only require basic pre-calculus knowledge, while the AMC 10 questions that don't use pre-calculus could actually be harder. 
Personally, we took the AMC 10 in seventh grade and then started taking only the AMC 12, eighth grade and onwards. Identify and understand what you are good at. This means that you might be really good at geometry problems, but terrible at number theory or probability. So in the test, focus on those geometry problems. Each question is worth the same amount of points, so there's no point spending a long time to try to get number seven, for example, if you think that you can do 22 or 23, if it's a geometry problem you understand better. Don't let these constructs of what should be get to you. For example, you might be in Algebra 1. You can still learn sine theta and cosine theta to solve those problems easily, and it's not necessarily that difficult of a concept. Your school class might not get to it, but you can easily learn it on your own with just a little bit of practice. Additionally, the same goes to when you're doing problems like 20 through 25, for example. You might have this idea in your mind of what should be. These questions should be too hard for me. I shouldn't be able to solve them. But a lot of the times, that's just what limits we set up for ourselves in our mind. If you push past those, you can actually do better than you expect. For example, when we were starting off with the AMCs, for the first couple of years, we wouldn't even touch the last five problems because we just had assumed that they were too difficult. But starting junior year, I realized that those last five problems are can be just like any of the other problems, and we were able to really have our score jump all the way up until 144 just by attempting those problems. And there have been AMC exams where I've solved the last five and gotten something like question seven wrong. For each of the questions on the prior practice exams on AOPS, there are solutions listed. And these solutions may be typed out solutions that you can read through, but there are also some video links of people who have posted YouTube videos on showing how to solve the problem. We recommend that you figure out how you learn best. So I, for example, understand written solutions better. Whereas I prefer to watch YouTube video solutions. And for watching the YouTube videos, I recommend that initially you start clicking through each one and even watching multiple people solve the exact same problem just to see different problem solving styles and eventually you'll learn which youtubers you like watching and then you can start specifically watching solutions just from those youtubers some of the channels that we like are art of problem solving especially the videos by richard bruxick the beauty of math sohil rothy walt s or canada math some people think that there isn't memorization involved in competition math and that it's only problem solving skills, but there are some formulas and tricks that you should memorize. We recommend you memorize the perfect squares up until 30, factorials up until 10, and all of the most common Pythagorean triples. You also don't have a lot of time to derive formulas in the exam, so make sure to know things like Heron's formula, Brahmagupta's formula, Siva's theorem that you can keep in mind while solving problems. We recommend that you go through Omega Learn's Crash Course AMC 1012 book because they have all of the formulas and kind of just all the main basic knowledge that you need to know. So if you're getting bored of practicing competition math or are looking for a way to get access to many different problems in different fields, I highly recommend Alchemist, which is a game on AOPS that basically gives you math counts and AMC questions and you can choose by overall fields like ge geometry or pre-calculus or even study very specific topics as close down to sine and cosine or Siva's theorem. There's a lot to check out there. For example, these are our Alchemist profiles. And as you can see, we've solved around 3,000 to 4,000 problems. And you can see our scores in different subjects to better understand what our strengths are. For each problem, you get two attempts. And after the second wrong attempt, the question will actually show you the solution, which is a very fast way to learn a variety of topics. And all of the questions are reputable coming from prior math counts and AMC exams. And as a final note, do not get discouraged. Competition math is a very long journey. We've been doing it constantly since sixth grade, and it can take a toll sometimes when you don't do very well on a certain competition or you underperform compared to your practices. But that's just a part of how it is. Don't compare yourself to others because in general, the competition math world can sometimes be a little toxic or cutthroat, especially because the people who have been competing for many years really do prioritize these competitions and they spend a lot of time prepping. But I recommend try your best, don't feed into the toxic environment, and regardless of how you score, you are learning important skills that'll help you in other aspects of your life, whether that's just problem solving, creativity, or honestly, it just feels good to try your best and potentially have the chance to win. A lot of people have been asking, is it too late to qualify for AIME, or they might only have one more year of competition math, but you can improve a lot in just one year. So for example, in seventh grade, we took the AMC 10 for the first time just to see what it was all about. 
and we had no idea what we were doing. We ran out of time and we were just working on the first like nine or 10 questions and we got scores within the 70s. But then within one year of a lot of work and studying, by eighth grade, I had qualified for the Amy with a score of 108 on the AMC 12 and also qualified for math prize for girls. And that was a lot more affirming for me because I saw my work actually going somewhere and getting results. So sometimes it takes time and you won't get results immediately, but with a lot of hard work, you will see improvement. Remember that high school competition math is not the end of the world and it is not your end life goal. This math, if you're really passionate about it, is worth pursuing. It will help you in your college classes or even your high school classes. It will help you later on in life, especially if you're pursuing STEM careers, and it'll give you important problem solving and creative thinking skills. So keep working at it.